I'm your host of the most local day three. You're joining me back for chapter twelve. It's almost three in the morning, and neither of you are tired. Okay, what about the teensiest, weensiest fraction of a hint about the quest line? I don't do hints, especially not about Golden Mountain Chain. What about bribes? I could bribe you. Ah, uh, you should have been throwing that out that offer while we were watching the movie. Oh, I think a good bribe might get you going again. I think I'll... Oh. Striptease? Hmm. I like how both are 17. Whisper in his ear. You lean over and whisper a few things you'd like to do later in his ear. He raises a very curious, penetrated eyebrow. Okay. One end. Yes! He smiles cryptically. Yellow. Wait, what? That's my hint. Take it or leave it. I'm leaving it right where I'm going to leave all the naughty things I was going to do to you in return for a good hint. It was a good hint. Hey, are you tired? I need to check on a few things for work. I could stand to get a couple of winks before sunup, though. Ditto. You're lucky I'm pulling a graveyard shift later. Here's your toothbrush and shows you to a guest room. Not far from his. You brush your teeth and make your way to his bedroom. It's exquisitely decorated like a beach cabana with canted ceilings and linen drapes. But there's no personal touches except for the desk. You find pictures there. One of Uncle Peter with his arms around Adam's two little cousins. Adam and the boys at Disneyland standing beside Mickey Mouse. And the last one gives you pause. The color is faded, but the younger child, a dark-haired boy, was obviously Adam. He has his arm around the neck of an older girl, honey blonde with green eyes. She's got an arm tight, tightly wrapped around Adam. This has to be Sabrina. While you study the photo, you feel a presence behind you uh, before you even hear a thing. She was a pretty girl. He throws a furtive glance at you, then lays the laptop hooked under his arm on the desk. Yes. You don't look very much alike. We had different fathers. I'm sorry for your loss. You must have loved her a lot. More than anything else on the planet. She was lucky, then, to have your love. You wrap your arms around his torso and squeeze tightly. You want him to know he's loved. He doesn't respond to your show of affection. You glance up and he's still staring fixatedly at the faded picture. That's the only picture I have of her. And I still can't even remember what she looks like then. Or when she died. How old was she? Twenty. I was thirteen. It happened just about the time I came back to California. I would have loved to have had a sister, even for a short time. I would have rather not had one than to watch her die the way she did. You pull away from him and sit down on the edge of the bed. He watches you for a moment, his face all tense, planes and rigid angles. How did she die? Overdose. Addiction. There was a family theme again. He'd once mentioned that he feared it more than anything else. He was afraid it was a genetic in in inevitability, and it was reinforced by the losses of those he loved. I'm sorry. Don't be. It's been 13 years. I tried to save her once, and she refused to let me. Just pretending a uh, nonchalant that he didn't feel. No matter how hard we try, some things will always remain out of our control. I can't accept that. Maybe you should. Mia, yeah, it's getting late. You're right. Too late to work. It's never too late. It is. And if I leave, you're taking that bed... Taking that to bed with you. So, which you gonna pick? Me? Or the work? He watches you with hooded eyes, but... Remains silent. Okay, I see how it is. You're making him uncomfortable, so now he's getting rid of you to work on his computer. Maybe that's his thing. Have sex, make them leave, and 
drown his emotions in work. No, Mia. Damn. Only if your laptop stays on the desk. It's late. I mean, early. Let, let's just get some sleep. Without another word, you go to the top of the bed, you pull the covers back and slip in. He joins you. He reaches out and hooks armor around your waist and pulls you back flush against him. I never took Adam for the type who would spoon. And here we are. Do you want to talk about it? He doesn't answer for so long that you think he never will. She was all I had. She was a sister, and she was a mother when Mom was out cold, which was pretty often. Hand slips under your shirt to rest atop your belly. You put your own hand on top of his, lacing your fingers between his. Then things between her and my mother got bad. Really bad. My mom couldn't stand the sight of her, and drove her out of the house when she was 15. We were homeless shortly thereafter, bouncing around from shelter to shelter. Shit, that's horrible. It's worse. She ran away, hit the streets. Same old cliché. Then she got any drugs, and addicted, and started selling herself. Your breathing freezes, and you go cold inside. The sister had sold herself for money. Drugs. To her ultimate destruction. Oh. He fears that's what's made of them. Intuition tells me he has drawn a parallel. I sold myself too for money. Is this the reason why Adam has been putting things off between us? Last time I saw her, I, I hopped on a bus when I was 12. Went up to Seattle to find her. I begged her to come back with me, but she wouldn't. Threw me back on the bus, yelled at me to get the hell out of the city. I never saw her again. You turn around in his arms so that you're facing him. There's nothing you could have done differently. I don't see the middle one as a good option. I mean, it was his mother's fault. But, right now, he doesn't want to play the blame game. I feel like this would be... comfort. Adam, you did all that you could. I didn't. Yes, you did. Don't beat yourself up about that. But you shouldn't compare her to the situation to mine. How could I not? The moment I sleep with you, you become a prostitute, and I become your John. Is this the reason, then? Why we haven't? Why you keep stopping it? He doesn't answer, even now he won't. But hadn't we crossed into this forbidden territory already? So we won't do this, really. I'm okay with it. We can end this here. It's not your decision to make, Mia. You're in too deep for that. But why? Remember who's in control. You know that now is not the time to argue this. Not with him having just laid himself bare to you. Instead, you curl in close to him, nestling against his hard chest. Despite the fact that I was utterly exhausted, my mind raced through ramifications. Adam and I would never have sex. The minute we did, he'd become like the men who had destroyed his sister. How could I go through with this hearing Sabrina's story? I refused to think that what I was doing was the same thing as prostitution. But Heath, and then Adam, had rightly disabused me of that notion. And now the implications are finally sinking in. The two of you sleep in until noon, have a quick brunch at his breakfast bar, and then he drops you off at home so you can get some work done on your poor, neglected blog. I come to the family dinner to tomorrow night. Adam, are we seriously going to keep ignoring this? Yes or no, Mia. With that evasion, he answers your question. Yes, we are going to keep ignoring this. I'll come. This is almost over, and part of you doesn't want it to be. 
pick you up at six. As always, he kisses you on the cheek and takes the steps two at a time down to his car. You shut the door and lean back against it, trying to ignore the aching emptiness you felt whenever he left. You check your messages. Heath and Mom have both tried to reach you. Um, we'll go with Mom then, Heath. I know I need to make an effort to stay on Heath's good side, but my mom's messages sound weirdly upbeat. I'm curious. You dial her phone number. Mia, how are you? Still feeling guilty about the way our last phone call had gone. You didn't lie to her, oh my god. You know that's hung up on me since, like, last week. And she's unnaturally chipper. Is she gonna tell me the truth? Or is this another way to act? To cover the money situation? Hey mom, I'm doing fine. How are things with your boyfriend? He's not my boyfriend. I can be optimistic, can I? I suppose, but that means I can do the same for you. Who am I going to meet up here in crusty old Anza? The odds might be good, but the goods are really odd, you know? She makes a really good point. It's about time you did find someone. I've been out of the house for four years. I'm feeling better than I have in a long time. Worry about yourself. Either she's putting up a hell of a good front, or something good has actually happened. How could this be? If the ranch was about to go into foreclosure... Because... People are idiots. Or... Oh... It just dawned on me. He paid off the foreclosure. And she did- and she- she doesn't know. Her, mo her mom was probably told not to say anything. Mom, can I ask you a question? Sure, as long as it isn't about my dating. When I was visiting in January, I saw some of the mortgage notices. I was waiting for you to tell me, but I guess you think I can't handle it. I didn't tell you because I was handling it. I didn't want to worry you with the big task coming up and all that you have on your plate. You're going to graduate from college. It's a happy time for us. What do you mean? I mean, it's taken care of. I can't give you details yet, but it's handled. I'll tell you in June. Which is exactly the end date of our contract. Huh. I'm hoping by July I can get a little summer business rustled up. Seriously? No bullshit? Language, Mia! I hope you don't talk like that around your boyfriend. Mom, we talk far worse. Okay, okay, he's not your boyfriend. Maybe I'll get to meet him after your graduation? Mom, we are talking about your mortgage. We were. Subject's now closed. It's taken care of. And that's a God's honest truth. So stop worrying and stop trying to take care of me. Okay. Thank God. I'm, I'm so glad. You've been fretting over this since January? Fretting is an understatement. Well, don't. I can't wait to see you in a few weeks. My little graduate... You are going to look amazing in that cap and gown. Until then, I'm turning off my landline for the next week and hitting the setting hard. If you need me, send me an email or text, okay? The mom has to has just come clean to me now, and I am shamelessly lied to her again. I mean, not really. You're just going to be doing something else for the next week. Does it f***ing matter? Shut up, it's a half-truth! At least I didn't tell her the whole thing. And she ain't told you the goddamn shit either. You're like, she came clean? No, she didn't. She just said it's taken care of. You don't know if it is. You want to sit and talk about morality? Let's go ahead and have a talk. At least I didn't tell her the whole truth. My phone was off because I'm be out of the country. Okay, but if you don't get back to me in a timely manner, I'll be forced to harass Heath. You know how much he loves that. Love you too, Mom. Talk to you soon. You click off, you feel like a 50 pound weight has been removed from your chest. Her mortgage was taken care of. She didn't have to give up the ranch. Had she gotten a loan? A grant? It all seemed so improbable, but there was no mistaking that she was telling the truth. Your mind wanders to the auction of the conundrum you found yourself in. Adam will never fulfill the deal if that's how he feels about the prostitution. You think about the $400,000 sitting in your Cayman Islands bank account. Money you'd never properly earned. 
and you come to a decision, you dial Heath. Hey, hon, what's up? So, I need to come clean about something, and you were right about the mistress thing. Wait, that he wants one, or... No, he doesn't. I found out that things are... God damn it. There's times when you accidentally tap, and thus I don't like tapping. I want you to refuse the bank transfer on the account. He sent you half the money up front, man. I thought the terms were fulfilled. I know, I know. They haven't. Yeah, I can't go through with it. Damn, that's a relief. Drake took it, okay? Yeah, he thinks it's a good idea, too. Why do I keep lying to all these people I love? And truthfully, it's what he could have meant last night. You can't tell whether it uh, was fatigue or regret for being so open, but he didn't say two words to you. You're trying to pretend everything is the same, but it's turned out on a 90 degree axis. And you're in charted, uncharted waters now. What about your money issues? What about med school? Half the money issues are gone. Oh. <laughs> We're doing this pole dance. Remember when you said I was an eight? I could always pole dance. Girl, you can't even do the electric slide. What makes you think you can strip? Valid point, but I think I'm falling in love with Adam. Lord, I can't follow you two. You make my head spin. Please, Heath. I promise I'll tell you everything when I can, but you know the NDA. Listen, I've told you now, and I'll tell you again. I don't like what all this has done to you. Now he's got you thinking you're his girlfriend instead of his call girl. That's not what it is at all. We aren't dating. There's been no discussion of a relationship status. And once we get back from the Caribbean, we aren't going to see each other again. And he knows that. He agrees with me. And you aren't going to sleep with him. No. So you aren't going to see him again... And you're not sleeping with him. How are you even going on the trip? Because I promised I would. Just FYI, if you do end up letting him sleep with you, that's real stupid. Just remember the old saying that buying the milk when you can get the cow for free? Shut up, I'm not a cow. You laugh, but your laugh is a weird quality, like you're on the edge of panic. If you hang up, you let his words stew again. If I take the money out of the equation, does that make it okay? Or... Am I making things worse? Your shift goes easily enough. You muddle through until Sunday dinner. You make it Adam's uncle's house early to avoid traffic. You help Uncle Peter prep the beef and chicken kebabs until Adam deals with a work issue. You're concentrating on pushing slimy pieces of raw chicken onto wooden steaks without gagging. Oh, come on! Cook, woman! Ah, so how's the studying for your MCATs going? Oh, not so good. I keep getting distracted. Ah, uh, you need to tell him to leave you alone so you can study. Oh, I can't blame it at all on him. Adam's a wonderful boy, and I love him like he's my son. But he can be overbearing sometimes. I'm not gonna argue with you about that. He's strong-willed. Always has been. It's how he's gotten where he is. But you're going to have to get tough with him when he gets like that with you. He'll respect you for it. Standing up to him aggravated him more than it gained my any respect, as far as I could tell. I hope you stick it out. He's happier than I've ever seen him in a long time. Your face burns and suddenly you wish he'd change the subject. Uh, good to know. So, um, now... How many of these chicken kebabs am I making? To your relief, he ditches the subject. Good thing, too. The doorbell rings. Adam gets it and ushers in. Oh, Christ, help me. Lindsay! And some young man. Yep, the cradle robber's back. You take a deep breath and put on a fake smile. Peter! Thanks for having us over. It's been ages. As usual, she's perfect. Spiky heels, designer dress, boys and elegant for a family barbecue. Adam ditches you for work again, and you decide to look at William's figurines again. You're not alone for long. And this is Liam's room, you know, not Adam's. I know. I was coming to get another look at the figurines. Oh, yeah! His little statues. He spent hours on those for years. Poor little guy. He seems quite happy. 
I've known this family for a long, long time, you know. Ignore her posturing and look at a huntus figurine as if she has any uh, any senior seniority over you. How long have you and Adam been together? Not very long. Mm, really? Has he set you up for work yet? Hmm. Okay, let's think about this. Has he stood us up for work? No. Actually, he hasn't. I mean, yeah, work has interrupted us. But standing someone up and being interrupted is two completely different things. Not once. Really? Well, it'll come soon enough. He is a married man, after all. What the... Married to his work. You'll always be a distant second. I don't come second to anything. Angrily, Adam interrupts you. Ah, uh, we're getting it going. Something came up at work, and I gotta run for a little while. Knowing small Lindsay shoots you, makes your blood boil. Adam waits for you at the doorway, then takes your hand, turns, and bids Lindsay goodbye. Anyone who knew Adam for a hot minute would be an idiot not to see he's a workaholic. But it doesn't matter to you. It can't matter. It's some other woman's problem. Your fists close in determination. There was no future for you. But something deep inside you doesn't want to see the end. When he pulls up to the curb, you don't move to get out of the car. What's up? Why did you bid on the auction? I know now how you must feel about the situation because of... because of your sister. What I don't understand is why choose to participate in the first place. Do you have to ask? Uh, the point is that I did. And you've got uh, an early shift tomorrow, if I remember correctly. This is a game for you, isn't it? You're twisting things again. Why am I going to be with the, you in the Caribbean? Because I want you to. But why? We aren't... He bends and cuts you off with his mouth, landing on yours. His large hand wrapping around your jaw, holding you in place while he explores your mouth with his. Let the kiss in. I don't like the fact that he's making a game out of this. And I'm not about to give him the privilege. You don't move, but you don't do anything. You just wait till it's done. When he pulls away his eyes, hold yours in a mesmerizing stare. You can see the reflection of yourself, like staring into a, two tiny dark mirrors. I'm not going to discuss this with you now. Will you discuss it with me later? Yes. Definitely after the trip. Given your mouth to protest, you aren't going to see each other after the trip. But you remember at the last minute you haven't explicitly told him that. Or returning the money, for that matter. You clamp your mouth shut and say goodbye. He had secrets, yes, but so do I. Uh, this story... Uh... It's getting complicated. <laughs> like, you're gonna like it. But... Mm, it's just getting very complicated. I feel like... It's him that's making it complicated, but I also feel like it's us that's making it more complicated. Like... I, I, I don't know. If you take the bidding equation out of it... There really isn't any drama, is there? Like, we're technically dating. I mean, that's that's about the truth of it. We are technically dating. There, There's nothing... If ands, or buts. Um, you've gone to family dinners with him. You guys have kind of fooled around, but no sex. You guys have, you know, just... it's It's just been kind of nice. It's been, you know, getting to know somebody. I don't, I don't see a, such a big deal with it. I think, like I said, you remove the bidding and the auction equation out of it, and this is any other typical relationship. Am I wrong? I mean, at least in my perspective, you know, when someone's a virgin and they are not willing to do something? I mean, if you think about it, Adam's the one that's not wanting to sleep with you. Like, he does want to, 
but he's like, no, I can't do that. Like, if anything, it's like Adam's a virgin. And he's really holding off trying not to give it up. And we are the one constantly pushing him. God damn, the roles have reversed, hasn't they? Um, I know, I know that feel, bro. I know that feel. <laughs> so without further ado, I hope you all did enjoy the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Add in the description below. Links to social media or Discord. And a few links to support me and my content. And without further ado, I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.